Hello again. And <laughs> I have a second talk. So this, this time about uh, meta files, which are an uh, important part in the office for historical reasons. They are used throughout the office, unfortunately. Uh, and um, I want to talk a little bit about the problems we have with them and how we could uh, solve these or at least escape in the long run. Because um, we get more and more problems with, with the meta file format and it's not really good handleable. So why is it necessary? Our internal meta file format and filters, they are designed long time ago. This is not bad by itself, it it's just means uh, with the age of the office of 25 years, something at least now. It means uh, the definition can come from 16-bit times. For example, the, the polygon actions are limited to integer points and the uh, point number to 65,000 and stuff like that. There are workarounds. Uh, like Microsoft itself, which, which is its own extensions of their meta file format. Uh, a lot of extra data is put into the meta comment action. Meta comment action means the meta, the, uh, the normally it's, it originally was thought to be just a comment and some text, but it is misused more or less with some title to identify what, what is this meta comment action might, might be, and binary data. This binary data normally is from some streaming. For example, there is a solution to get um, all of polygon, poly polygon data, fill style, line style, uh, all streamed in high quality, quality and double precision in such a file, which is then put to a meta comment action and for example, used, embedded in slideshow and stuff like that. So all big hacks. And even those big hacks are not that bad because Microsoft did pretty much the same, which makes the format not better. And on their side of the format, um, they even got further than that with, with uh, enhanced formats of meta files which they needed to support more stuff. They still try to be compatible to the original one and they extended even these mechanisms to put stuff into the comment actions and more of this, even more of this. Inside the comment actions, this binary data may again have some comment actions and extensions. And there are some mechanisms to also always keep the old stuff alive. And when you know the comment action, to, to spool over the old actions and not use them, of course, because they are replaced with, with the more information inside. And it's pretty much the same in our internal meta file format. Um, and we are just not capable of handling more complex extended Microsoft formats. Only some actions of GDI Plus are supported, for example. So there are often bugs coming in uh, where, for example, there, there are complex bitmap uh, actions with mapping and stuff like that. And I fixed the bug from, from somewhere where uh, a GDI bitmap with transparency came in and this action was just not supported. But it was not too hard to, to support it because uh, I once sorted out this uh, GDI bitmap loading stuff and there was already a method at least to, to read a RGBA uh, bitmap in, in Microsoft format. So it not, was not too hard, but it shows um, maybe one, one third of the actions are supported, something like this, I think even, even less. And it has not aged well with Microsoft extending the formats because every time Microsoft brings a new format, it's just added to be detected by our filter. And since Microsoft keeps it downward compatible itself, it usually works and not too bad because it's uh, very, very basic data gets still imported. Uh, and even after years, of bug fixing, there are still problems with the meta file format. You still find errors in it. Um, and the high complexity uh, also comes from 
uh, close, being close to the Win GDI for historical reasons, for when, when the office was originally created, it, they more or less ported the, the original GDI stuff uh, to, to all the one on Linux, more or less, than before it was extended and more intelligently brought forward. And uh, the result is stuff like uh, this horrible gradients we have, which may be created in just three days and does nothing else than uh, calculating the rectangle and then going inside painting the ellipses and going inside by pixels. Pixels, so the ellipse will end in a line and not be smoothly uh, um, painted like you would expect from gradients. And we have multiple importers, exporters, because uh, other parts of the office uh, and other implementers detected that they need more information of GDI plus or something and there are workarounds spread over the office. Uh, problems of the current meta file, our, in our own internal stuff, is it's simply not transformable and embeddable. So normally what you want to do with graphic stuff is you have your graphic description and you want to paint it with some other few transformation. With meta files you can in principle do it but it never works because <coughs> What uh, is used, uh, maybe when, when you have ever looked at the graphics step, you stack, you know uh, what a map mode is, and map mode is more or less a few transformation. And the map mode is just hard set. It's not really a stack. You can push and pop it, but no one use it, it uses it. And every meta file at the beginning sets more or less a hard map mode. So you cannot embed it into another meta file. Theoretically, there is a map mode which defines a um, relative map mode to the existing one, but this again would, would need to know what existing one you have, so it just doesn't work. <laughs> uh, with, with primitives you can just uh, take what you have and put it in another transformation and if you have an ellipse uh, and you put it in a transform uh, uh, primitive you can paint it thousand times anywhere else in, in other dimensions and sizes and it's always the same. So it's the same object we used, much easier. Uh, static actions and extensions using comment action. I already talked a little bit uh, at the start. Uh, it's really not expandable. This is about um, theoretical because we have our own meta file format. Uh, we are free to define our own meta file actions, but it is pretty useless because with a new meta file action you have to implement uh, all the parts in the code where meta files are interpreted, created or used. You have to re-implement it anywhere, at any place and when you forget it somewhere you will get bugs and problems. There's no way to make it more simple. With primitives for example you can uh, any time define your own primitive and as long as it uh, implements the decomposition you can get a simplified version of it and you have not to adapt a single user of the primitive chain. It's, it's, it just calls decompose and uses the simpler representation. So uh, that's a huge difference when you want to handle it. So it's, it's not really expandable at all. It's, it hurdles are just too high. And unfortunately, it's used everywhere. <laughs> and it's used as data exchange format. Uh, a meta file originally was just a recording of paint, and someone found out oh, when I record the paint, I can replay it and do stuff with it. But originally, it was never thought as uh, abstract geometry de description with, with which you can do stuff, so geometry processing, never thought for it. For example, the current meta file has move, scale and rotate methods which have to implement all of these single actions, all which, which have to be covered and changed and new actions have to be created. That's, that's what, what the meta file has to do when, when you want to move it a little bit. Um, and you still have conversion losses. Um, 
and it's it's used as data exchange format uh, pretty often to get data over the UNO API, to get graphical data over the UNO API. You have a lot of cases where uh, uh, the edit views or simple simple objects are rendered into a meta file just to record this. Uh, this is all streamed uh, the meta file and and the the. Uh, binary data is then put as a file stream over the UNO API and on the other side it is decoded again. So uh, with primitives, uh, uh, primitive is uh, a UNO RP object, you can just hand it over, much easier. So uh, compared with uh, Meta file importers, which which interprets uh, the Microsoft format and and put it into our own Meta file format, which of this course is pretty close to the Microsoft format. Uh, what does the S SVG importer do instead? It's an abstract filter module, much more modular, as independent from the rest of the code as possible. Has a UNO API. Um, the result is a sequence of primitives. Uh, with which you can work further. Um, so it's UNO API capable and the result can just be returned as a UNO, UNO value. The result is reusable, as I said before, you can just put it into, into uh, other graphic stacks by surrounding it by an own transformation or stuff like that. Uh, by the way, Besides the transformation change, there's, for example, in the primitives, um, something to change the colors or to force the output to black and white and stuff like that. You can just embed it in one of those and use that for rendering. Um, and it has an abstract ge geometric description with high quality. And even when the stuff which is available in primitives today um, does not cover what you need to import with your filter. There's always a very, very simple workaround. So uh, you make a group primitive with, with a type of your own and you, you don't define a decompose and the default decompose of the group primitive is to hand back the children. So in your filter you put all your data you have imported in this group primitive Every, every renderer or user of a sequence of primitives will, will ignore it because it will process the children. But your place where you want to use your imported data can just detect uh, this new primitive which you have created only for this purpose and use your data which you have put there. So this is a really good and backwards compatible mechanism which should be more used and I, I, in, my, in my former talk I, sh I showed some examples um, and bug fixes and uh, speed improvements which use something similar like that. So, may buffer contain preserve originals, that's also something <coughs> the SVG filter does, it works more or less the same like uh, the bitmap import exporters. These also keeps the original. Uh, so uh, this guarantees, for example, you, you have in the edit view this nice command in the context menu, save original bitmap or save bitmap. This saves the original bitmap, whatever you may have done. So uh, your original bitmap is always accessible and not lost. And this is also working with SVG, but not with metafiles, because with metafiles it is imported in our own format and the original is not kept. So, no access anymore, not saved in, in, when you save uh, your office file. So, what, what we don't have for SVG is a generic SVG export filter because there is an SVG filter. What I mean here is a generic SVG export filter for simple parts of graphics. We don't have that. We have a big SVG export filter which iterates over all pages, over all objects and makes a good job. So. It's not too bad, but it would be better when it internally for single objects would have an, a low-level SVG which can export single objects and if we would have this to save single objects <coughs> as single SVG graphics. When we currently do that, 
when you have a single object selected, selected and export as SVG, uh, a whole page gets created and always a whole document gets created. So how, how to get there? First, we would need to implement an import-export filter for all the Microsoft formats, which uh, create a sequence of primitives in no more any of our internal meta files. During development, it's possible to, to bridge between these both formats because there uh, are ways to get there and to get back. So uh, you can render the primitives into a meta file and there is a uh, there's a functionality to change the meta file back to primitives. Uh, both are using very high quality and both use all those hacks. So this should be in some years the last place where those hacks are used. Migrate meta file uh, primitive, uh, no, after development this will still be necessary, yeah, because of the many places where meta files are used. So mi migrate meta file usages uh, to sequence of primitives over time and uh, I hope we find some volunteers to help there to get more and more stuff on the sequence of primitive side. So sequence of primitives can completely replace the meta file stuff yeah. on the long term. So, and there are possible abstractions. The filters will be similar. Unify basic framework, advanced common tooling for them would be a possibility to make it easier to write such filters. And all format filters could go that way. Even bitmap filters, bitmap import, export, norm, uh, at the moment um, produce bitmap, bitmap X and graphic and all those structures we internally have. Many too many for graphic stuff and they could just return a, a simple sequence of primitive containing the one bitmap primitive. Um, so it would, would be a unified uh, file, unified internal format to create and get your data around. So direct embedding in rendering preparation data would be the result because uh, what you get from the filters is di directly what you put into uh, the rendering process of the, of the edit views. Okay, that's it. Questions for it? So this is all future stuff, uh, not really started, a lot of thinking about it, uh, prepared to go, but not yet going. And uh, the primitive st stuff which we have today does already some of these replacements, but maybe 10%, so a lot to do. Questions? How is time? Two minutes over. Okay. <laughs> Thank you.